What up, Fortnite fam? I'm Matt, and I've got a question to ask you. What is the absolute worst update in Fortnite that you can remember? One that made casual and competitive so much less fun, or one that simply ruined the meta? Well, we're here today to go over different updates that almost killed Fortnite. Are you ready for this? Because some of these memories might give you some pretty nasty flashbacks. In Chapter 1, we got one of the biggest updates to close off the first end of Chapter event. However, not everything was welcome. In fact, much of Season X was hated when it first came out. There was one thing, though, that players hated more than anything. That's right, I am talking about the mechs. Where to begin with the mechs? There is a reason players really don't want these behemoths back in the game, and it starts with how it essentially gave players a free win. At the time, players using the new mech vehicle were essentially riding inside a walking tank. It was an absolute bullet sponge, meaning it was tough to take down even with your best weapons. You would be wasting ammo trying to eliminate someone in a mech, and your only salvation was having a good enough aim to hit the pilot directly. However, there wasn't much luck in doing that when mech users were firing at you with an array of weapons. The mech was a two-player vehicle, with one person controlling movement and a second player controlling those deadly weapons. However, that didn't stop players from simply swapping between both seats. Even when the mech finally returned in Chapter 2's finale, they still managed to cause an uproar, with many fearing their comeback. With the island flipping though, it seems like any remaining mechs are likely at the bottom of the ocean. Will we ever see these machines return to the island? Hopefully not anytime soon. But you never know. Mechs may have been removed from Fortnite, for now. But if they ever come back, you are going to need some good aim if you want any hope of surviving. Visit Aim Labs today by clicking on the link below and starting your training today. There is a wide selection of fully customizable exercise routines, so you'll be able to show improvement in a variety of games, ranging from Valorant to Warzone and, of course, Fortnite. After the hecticness that was the Chapter 5 Bounty Hunters theme, the island went back in time to the Cretaceous period. Dinosaurs roamed the island and our weapons were sent back to the Stone Age. Primal weapons were a new craftable line of weapons which had less accuracy in exchange for more powerful blows. They were supposed to be the opposite of mechanical weapons, which were your standard weapons throughout the chapter. The concept, while interesting in the overall meta for Season 6, didn't exactly go off as planned. At first, the primal shotgun was an absolute beast, but also one of the most overpowered items of the season. After it eventually got nerfed, primal weapons quickly fell out of grace, with many preferring the more accurate weapons such as the standard assault rifle. The inclusion of primal weapons did have a ripple effect on how mechanical weapons could be obtained. In fact, it actually dealt a major blow to the weapon meta of the time. Because of the new crafting system, most of the floor loot would be green, with the only way to obtain better weapons weapons being to craft them using bones or mechanical parts. While bones were a dime a dozen, mechanical parts were a bit harder to come across. For these, the best and often most accessible way of obtaining them was through hitting cars and hoping that you could get a part or two from it. To make matters worst, the makeshift weapons weren't great, so if you didn't craft it into something better, you'd see yourself getting stomped really quickly. It wasn't until later in that season that older weapons were added to the rotation, with more standalone weapons appearing as floor loot. This did make Season 6 more forgiving than before, but the removal of primal weapons at the start of the next season had players very happy to have the old system back. So, since we're now just exiting the topic of primal weapons, it seems like the perfect time to start talking about those pesky, unidentified flying objects that started popping up toward the end of Season 6. That's right, I'm talking about UFOs and the invasion that would set the stage for the end. UFOs were an interesting new vehicle that had a very unique set of abilities. For starters, they had more controlled flight, allowing players to find safety in the sky. On top of that, they also had excellent offensive capabilities. The plasma cannon had the ability to absolutely demolish builds and level the playing field. Even with its low rate of fire, the power of each shot made it well worth the time to wait. Finally, being able to abduct other players was a great way of splitting up a team and breaking the synergy. Some called the UFOs OP, 
Others called them good fun. However, we will give them one thing. It was always pretty entertaining just to try to level an entire BOI during a casual match. Who remembers a game titled Infinity Blade? It had some of the best graphics for a mobile game at the time and even went as far as to get an arcade port. Even if you were unfamiliar with the title, the name of the item itself might actually jog some pretty unpleasant memories. Yep, that's right. In one of Fortnite's crossovers, the Infinity Blade came to the island during Chapter 1 Season 7 and could be wielded by players as they fought to become the last one standing. This resulted in one of the most overpowered items in the game. The Infinity Blade was the weapon to end all weapons. If you obtained the sword, you could easily get a win. Your health was buffed up to 200 and your shields were also raised to 200. Essentially, you could become a bullet sponge that not only absorbed damage but also regained health over time. Yeah, that's right. Wielding the sword would also gradually regenerate your health over time, as well as whenever an opponent was eliminated. It was like siphon, but even better. To top it all off, you gained a speed boost that made you a much more difficult opponent to hit. With the power of the Infinity Blade, it basically made you an unstoppable murder machine, much to the dismay of other players trying to get a win. Before there were UFOs, planes took to the sky. These vehicles were excellent for getting across the map quickly. However, they also allowed players to dominate the entire match with them. If the planes were at least randomly spawning, then it could mean obtaining one would be up to chance. However, planes were a guaranteed spawn in around 10 locations, meaning if you had a good landing strategy, you could essentially get the plane every single match. It was also much more hectic when teammates could hitch a ride and freely use their weapons. Before Epic patched the planes, they also had another ability. This was that they could ram through builds like a knife through butter, destroying many players' strategy-based decisions and basically turning the meta into a game of who can reach the plane first. After a patch, planes lost the ability to ram through builds, but they were still seen as OP by the community. Just because an update is small, that doesn't mean it can't disrupt the meta. So let's talk about stink bombs. Oh boy. This item wasn't necessarily a one-hit kill, but boy did it make life difficult for anyone that wanted to use builds. When this item was first dropped, it was absolutely despised by the community. When used, it would emit a stink gas that would slowly whittle away health in chunks until it eventually consumed up to 90 health. While the simple solution would be to run away, the way the gas would work made it very difficult to how something like fire works. It bypasses shields and did damage directly to the health. When used against someone trying to build, it would essentially force players to move or be consumed by the gas. Safe to say, players found this new addition extremely annoying. Hey, hey guys. Before we wrap things up today, don't forget to visit Aim Labs and find out how you can become an aiming god today. Right, we have one more update to go over, so let's take a look. Map updates are the best. They add fresh new locations for us to explore and keep the map feeling dynamic and ever-changing. Often, map locations are added based on the overall theme of a season. There have been many POIs since the game first launched. However, there are also some that are considered. There have been so many great POIs since the game first launched, but there are also some that are considered kind of bottom of the barrel. Unfortunately, in Chapter 2, one of the more unique biomes would definitely fall into this category. Presenting Coral Castle. Coral Castle was a brand new POI introduced during Chapter 2 Season 3. With the island flooding, we got a much more aquatic place to play, and eventually the top right corner of the map became drained, revealing a sunken city hidden beneath the water. With exposed coral and a majestic palace, it seemed like an interesting drop spot at the time. However, players soon started to come to the conclusion that Coral Castle wasn't exactly as cool as it looked. In fact, there really wasn't anything special about it, and the difficulty of getting out made people avoid landing there altogether. Landing in the corner of the map can be a good thing if you have a good way to rotate toward the center of the island. This is why locations such as Steamy Stacks were viable. You could always just hop in a vehicle and be on your way. Coral Castle, on the other hand, was a little bit different. It was basically in the middle of the ocean with a steep waterfall blocking your exit. It was near impossible to swim out and despite having boats available, it was still an awkward ride up which often resulted in your boat being pushed back. No, once you arrived at Coral Castle, there were only about two places that you could leave, and you had to do it on foot, making it a nightmare to actually get to your next rotation. After its release, seasons came and went, and Coral Castle 
just sat abandoned by the community. Well, that wraps up things for today, Fortnite fam. Did you enjoy the video? Be sure to leave a like and ring that bell to stay up to date with all the latest and greatest tips and tricks that we have to offer. Also, feel free to leave a comment and let us know if there is anything you would be interested in learning more about. Remember, updates in Fortnite have their ups and downs, and this is why to be a pro Fortnite player, you need to roll with the good and the bad. What awaits us in Fortnite Chapter 3 Season 2? Well, some ideas are floating around, but we'll just have to wait and see how the future of the game develops. Once again, my name is Matt, and we'll see you on our next video.